G'day guys and welcome back to another instalment of the Life Aquatic with Rob Bull and as always thank you guys for all the support it's been amazing originally I didn't think anyone would want to watch this so today's instalment is on the incredibly exciting topic of algae but we're going to give it a bit of a twist today we're not just going to look at how we can get rid of it although we will definitely look at that but we'll have a look at how we can use it in our aquariums. So before we get started, a quick reminder, if you guys find this interesting or helpful, uh, hit that like button. Definitely hit the subscribe button. And if you think that your friends might find this helpful, don't forget to share it out. Now, I think I'll start with an overview here. And first of all, first question, is algae bad? And the answer is only if you don't like the look of it. Or you don't want it competing with your plants. So algae is fulfilling the same role and competing for the same nutrients as your plants are. And we'll quickly go through the different types of algae, how to get rid of them, and whether they are useful to you. So I guess I'll start with the one that uh, sparked this search for information and inspired uh, the idea for this video. And here we have some brown spot algae, more correctly known scientifically as diatoms. And Rob's fun fact time, diatom actually means cut in half. Now the reason they puzzled me and sparked this video was that in the tank that they were appearing in, there were no registrable nitrates. And the java moss that I'd introduced had been struggling to grow. Obviously I was curious as to why this was, and a little bit of research turned up the answer. These crafty little buggers can use silicon as well as nitrates to reproduce and thus grow the colony, resulting in these magnificent brown dots. These are, however, harmless, unless you get an absolutely massive bloom, and they're fairly obviously feeding off the sand using the silica from the sand to create their cell walls. For me personally, I'm not particularly worried about it. I'm quite happy to leave it there, but I'm not happy to leave it on the front of the glass. Fortunately, you can quite simply wipe it off with a coarser sponge now, if I did actually want to get rid of it, the simplest answer would be to get a bristlenose pleco. Plecos, shrimp, snails, all of these things will eat them. Also, controlling the amount of nutrients that these things are getting will obviously control their numbers. And you can reduce both nitrates and silicon levels in your water by changing it. Personally, I'm not a fan of chemical algae control, so if you want to go down that route for brown spot algae, then I suggest you do your research on your product that you intend to use and how it will affect all of the creatures that live in your aquarium. Fortunately, it's easily removed naturally, and for me, although it's ugly, it serves a purpose, so I just leave it unless it's on the viewing glass. Normally, you'll only see this kind of algae in a newly cycling tank. Uh, this tank has been running for three years, although most of that time was not under my control and was running without a light so I'm getting these blooms now. Moving right along, we come to the green hair algae. Now there's three main varieties of this gear. Cladophora, which is a bit rougher to the touch. Spirogyra, which is slimy to the touch, and incidentally is the stuff that is in my shrimp breeding aquarium. And Pithophora, which is coarse like wool. Personally, I love this stuff and would never get rid of it. But if it's getting in your way, if you don't like it, there are ways to get rid of it. It is just as appealing to algivorous fish and invertebrates as the brown algae is. So plecos and stuff will work just as well. Obviously you can also scrub it, although this stuff's a bit harder to get off than the brown stuff. And as I mentioned earlier, in my opinion, chemicals are bad, okay? Apparently you can also use CO2 uh, to tackle this one. Although to be honest, I've never wanted to get rid of this algae, so I've never tried. In my opinion, this is one of the best foods that you can feed to any herbivorous creature. Moving on, we come to the bastard of bastards, the blue-green algae. Now this stuff isn't even algae, it's in fact a kind of bacteria that is capable of photosynthesis. This stuff is toxic to fish, so obviously you can't use plecos, shrimp, snails, things like that to control it. And the only real way to control it is to manually scrub it off and then siphon it out. And most importantly of all, 
correcting the nutrient problem. It's in everybody's tank, so why do some people get a big bloom? Overfeeding, too much light. If you do have it, correct those two things, manually remove it, and pray it goes away. And the last cab off the rank is the other bastard algae, black beard algae, or the pirate algae. Unlike the cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, this stuff isn't poisonous, it won't harm your fish. So if your fish are suffering, and you have noticed blackbeard algae, chances are it's due to one of the underlying causes of the algae, as this algae tends to thrive in high nitrite environments. So get out your test kit and test for those nitrites. The reason that blackbeard algae is a bastard is simply that it's hard to remove. It's an unappealing algae to animals that eat algae, and you're unlikely to find animals that are going to be willing to eat it. Chances are you'll have to starve them into it. Having never had the algae, the most common treatment that I can find is direct application of hydrogen peroxide directly to the algae. As you might have guessed, I'm not a big fan of that option, so I wouldn't use it. There's plenty of videos out there on the net. If you're going to try it, I'd suggest you look at some of those first. And so the other option is to address the specific causes of the blackbeard algae. And the two big ones for blackbeard algae are nitrite levels and phosphorus levels. And remember guys, there's phosphorus in a lot of water conditioners, so don't use too much of that stuff. So now, as promised, I'll go over how I get the algae to work for me. To begin with, what good things are algae doing for me in my fish tank? For starters, they're behaving like plants using the energy and light to split carbon dioxide molecules, keeping the carbon and ditching the oxygen back into the water. Secondly, they are the staple food for herbivorous fish, crustaceans and mollusks. It's a kind of superfood for those fish. And as you can see in my video on shrimp breeding, which I'll link in the description, I actually use the green algae to feed the shrimp. In addition to this, it provides a habitat and food for the microorganisms in your tank which then in turn provide food for larger microorganisms and the things that we know we have in our tanks creating an ecosystem but i will go into ecosystems and how to create them in an upcoming video so what are the bad things about algae well for most of them the only bad thing is that they are unsightly and with all of them the only way to ensure that they're not going to come back is to ensure that they don't have the nutrients to come back. You can achieve this by outcompeting them with plants, and this is helped along tremendously by having something like a algae eating pleco in there to decimate the algae while the plants grow. Blackbeard algae is a little bit different, uh, as it will kill your plants, but it won't harm your fish, so for me at least, that matters much more. And of course then you've got the cyanobacteria, or blue-green algae, and that stuff's actually toxic, so that stuff you definitely want to get rid of as quickly as possible. Another thing to keep in mind with blue-green algae is that it's not always blue or green. Uh, quite often in aquariums it comes across as a reddish or pinkish colour. So there you go, there's algae in a nutshell. Admittedly a rather long nutshell. If you do have any questions, just pop them in the uh, comments below and I'll endeavour to get to all of them. So, thanks again for watching and all the support. You guys have been amazing. And if you guys have found this to be helpful or informative, uh, make sure that you hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed and sharing, that would mean the world to me as I'm trying to build this channel and help as many people as possible. But until next time, as always, look after each other, guys.